Hello friends, welcome again to my YouTube channel. In the previous video, I gave a brief introduction on sugar laboratory. I talked about functions of laboratory in sugar industry, examples of samples, and I listed out some of the analysis done in this lab. Today, I'm going to start with the first analysis, which is determination of bricks, pole, and purity of juice extracted from sugarcane. Samples of extracted juice are categorized as follows depending on the section juice is sampled along processing line. The first sample is first expressed juice. This juice collected from the first rollers of milling tandem. Next, we have last expressed juice. This juice is collected from the last rollers of milling tandem. Next, we have mixed juice. This is a mixture of juice from all sets of rollers of milling tandem. Remember, this juice is pumped to juice treatment section. Next, we have lime juice. This juice is mixed with calcium hydroxide. Next, we have clear juice. This juice is the one that comes from clarifier. It's clear and is free from suspended solids. So it's pumped to evaporation section. And finally, we have filtered juice. This juice is sucked by rotary vacuum filter from mud applying on its surface. Pole is the apparent sucrose content measured by automatic polarimeter. Isle bricks is a measure of total dissolved solids in a solution. It is measured by the refractometer. And purity is the percent proportion of pole in bricks. This analysis are done to determine the amount of sugar present in juice sample, the quality of cane being milled, as well as losses that occur in milling and juice treatment section. Sucrose content of a solution is measured by observing how the solution affects polarized light of polarimeter. When plain polarized light of around 589 nanometer wavelength pass through sucrose solution, it rotates to the right direction. This is measured as the angle of rotation. The polarimeter automatically converts this angle of rotation to pole value. Angle of rotation depends on the quantity of sucrose in the solution. For example, final sugar has high sucrose content compared to filter cake, hence its angle of rotation is high. Color affects transmission of light through the solution, therefore, the solution must be transparent and should not contain any suspended particle. Lead acetate is therefore added to samples to clarify them by removing color comp components, fructose and high molecular weight dextran present for efficient pore reading. Below are the apparatus, samples, equipment and chemical needed for pole analysis. Number one, we have automatic polarimeter and pole tube which is 200 millimeters in length. Number two, we have juice samples, i.e. first express juice, last express juice, mixed juice, clear juice and filtered juice. Next, we have lead acetate, these are chemical. Next, you have 250 ml beaker. Next, you have conical flask. Next, you have funnel. Next is filter papers. Next, spatula. Next, is tissue. And finally, laboratory water bottle having distilled water. Procedure of pole analysis is the same for all juices. So you can decide to analyze one sample. For example, you can start with first expressed juice. After that, you go to the next, which is mixed juice. You do like that up to the end. But if you have experience in this analysis and you are sure that you will not interchange the results of these juices, you can run this analysis, the analysis of all juices at once. This procedure is divided into two, that sample preparation and pore reading. When the samples come into the lab, it's, lab, it's good to sieve to remove the suspended solids. After that, for example, so this procedure, let me assume we are, we are doing the analysis of filtered juice. So you pour 200 ml of the juice sample into a 250 ml beaker, then add two spatula of lead acetate, then stir the mixture thoroughly. Next. Fold the filter paper and place in the funnel. Next, place this funnel on top of conical flask and pour the mixture in the funnel. Next, discard the first 20 ml of the filtrate collected and finally collect the remaining filtrate for pore reading. 
Wash the pole tube with distilled water, then rinse it with some of the filtrin collected. Pole tube has to be rinsed first before doing the analysis in order to remove any residue of samples remain there after the previous analysis. Fill this tube with the remaining sample and wipe away any liquid on the tube. Put on the polarimeter machine using the button at the back. Put the, the tube that has sample into the polarimeter. Ensure that the bubble is on the wide part of the polarimeter tube. Remember, presence of bubbles in the solution hinder efficient light transmission leading to wrong results. When you place the tube in the polarimeter, it automatically start, start to take the measurement. The first measurement gotten is referred to as first reading. If you want to get the second measurement, click the REM button. If you want to get the third measurement, click again REM button. To get the average of these three readings, click average button. For our case, the, the, average, the average value is 23.822. So we will record rec the pore reading of filtrate to be 23.822. Remove the tube, discard the sample, clean it with the water, and start analyzing the second sample. The next analysis is Briggs analysis. I said earlier that bricks of juices are determined by refractometer. Refractometer is a laboratory device used to measure refraction index of light that passed through solution sample placed on the prism. Refraction is the bending of light when it passes from one medium into another of different optical density. For our case, light passed from, from air to the liquid solution on the prism. Refractometer automatically converts index of refraction to Briggs value. Requirements for Briggs analysis are refractometer, samples for a case you have first expressed juice, last expressed juice, mixed juice, clear juice, and filtered juice. Remember, these juices have to be sieved and cooled to room temperature. The next is pipette, next beaker, next tissue, and finally laboratory water bottle having distilled water. In Briggs analysis, we do not need transparent solution, so we will not add lead acetate to the juice samples. We just read direct after sieving and cooling to room temperature. So the first step is to switch on refractometer by clicking on stroke off button and wait until it shows dashes and current temperature. Next. Clean the prism by pipetting few drops of distilled water on the prism and remove these drops again by tissue or cleaning cloth. This is important to remove any residue of sample from previous analysis. Next, add another drops of distilled water on the prism to zero the device. Remove these drops again with dry tissue. Next, Put the sample on the prism using different pipettes. If you have multiple samples, make sure that you use different pipettes for each sample. Ensure that the sample has completely covered the prism and there are no air bubbles that might interfere with the reading. Once the sample is on the prism, click read button. The results will be displayed immediately. In this case, bricks or filtered juice is 8.6 after doing your poll and bricks analysis it's important to record your results in table as shown below i've given these results so that i can show you how you can compute your data after the analysis so in our table the first row is about the samples analyzed the second row is bricks of the samples and finally the third row is pore reading of each sample. So the first sample is first expressed juice, its bricks is 18.1, pore reading 64.3. Last expressed juice, its bricks is 3.4, pore reading 10.7. Mixed juice is 12.0, pore reading 41.2.
clear juice bricks 12.2 or reading 42.0 filtered juice bricks 8.6 remember this is the sample that i've covered in my video we found out the bricks was 8.6 and pore reading was 23.822 so we round off this reading to one decimal place which is 23.8 remember these results are not constant sometimes you can get below this result or above so this result is just an example of one of the analysis that can be done in the lab pore reading obtained by polarimeter is not the actual pole percent of juices so there's a table known as chimesis table that is used to correct this pore reading to actual pole percent of juices it consists of around five tables and for example if you want to calculate the pole percent of first expressed juice we will start with looking for the table which is suitable for that reading so the first table in the first table this value up here is the bricks of juices and these values on these sides are the pole reading so in this video in in this table the highest bricks is 10 but the bricks of our first expressed juice is 18 and the pole of first express juice is 64 yet the highest reading in this in this table is 23 so we will move to the next table our next table the highest bricks yes it's 20 so our 18.1 will lie there but pole reading the highest is 21 so we'll still go to the next table so in our third table the highest bricks is 19.5 so we will we'll find here there is 18 and in poor reading table the highest poor reading is 71 so 64 will be found in this table so we will use this table to find the actual percent poll so in the in this in this side of bricks I've said the poll the bricks of first express is 18.1 so let's see where does it lie it lies between 18.0 to 18.5 so in between 18.0 to 18.5 the the median the median my median value is 18.25 so any value between below 18.25 is read under 18.0 and any value above 18.25 is read at 18.5 so our value was 18.1 so we'll start here at 18.0 and Paul was 64 so we'll, we'll draw this 64 and this is 18 so the the, the value that means 18 and 64 is 15.53 so we will record 15.53 and our poll reading is 64.3 so we will read the actual poll of 0 0.3 let me show the table that will give us the value so this is the table so the poll percent of 0 0.3 is 0 0.07 so we will take 15.53 plus 0 0.07 which is equals to 15.60 so this is the actual percentage of first expressed juice our second sample was last expressed juice and the bricks of last expressed juice is 3.4 and poor reading is 10.7 so let's start with our first table the highest bricks of this table is 10 so last 3.4 can be found in this table and poll reading the highest is 23 that means poll of 10.7 can be found in this table so we will not continue to the next table so we just use this the first table so let's see where 3.4 lies it lies between 3.0 and 3.5 and i say that in between 3.0 and 3.5 we have 3.25 so any value that lies above 
is is taken under 3.5 so for our 3.4 we read 3.5 and our pole is 10 so at this the value that lies between 10 and 3.5 is 2.57 so we record that 2.57 and our power reading is 10.7, so we have to read the percent pole of 0 0.7. Let me show the table that will give us that value. So this is the table. At 0 0.7, we have 0 0.17. So we'll take 2.57 plus 0 0.17, we get 2.74. So 2.74 is the pole percent of last expressed juice our third sample was mixed juice bricks of mixed juice was 12.0 pole reading 41.20 so we look at our first table the highest bricks is 10 so this one will not be will not help us in getting the pole percent of mixed juice we go to the second table the second table yes has bricks of about 20 but for reading, the highest is 29. And remember, for reading of our sample is 41. So we move to the next table. In our third table, the highest bricks is 19. And the highest pole is 71. So this table will help us to get pole percent of mixed juice. I'll say bricks of mixed juice is 12. So let's, let's see where 12 is. Yes, it's here. And pole reading is 41.2. So our, our 41 is here. So the value that's between 41 and 12 is 10.18. So you record 10.18. And remember, poll reading, I said it's 41.2. So let's get the poll percent of 0.2. We use this table. So for 0 0.2, it's 0 0.05. So we take 10.18 plus 0 0.05. The total will be 10.23. So pole percent of mixed juice will be 10.23. Our fourth sample was clear juice. Bricks is 12.2 and pole reading is 42.0. So we we'll, we we'll look at the first table. The highest is 10. The highest 10 so this one will not help us to get the pole percent of juice we go to the second table the second table yes has high bricks of 20 but pole reading is 21 so it's below 42 we go to the third table the third the third table the highest bricks is 19.5 and pole is 71 so this table will help us to get of clear juice so bricks is 12.2 let's see where 12.2 lie so it's between 12.0 and 12.5 and i say that in between 12.0 and 12.5 is 12.25 so any number below 12.25 is read under 12.0 and i've said poor reading is 42 so poor reading is here 42 so the value here be between 42 pole of 42 and bricks of 12.0 is 10.43 so we record that 10.43 and remember pole reading was 42.0 so this is zero does not have pole percent value so our reading our pole percent of clear juice will be 10.43 finally we have filtered juice bricks of filtered juice it was 8.6 and poor reading was 23.8 let's see which table will help us to get all we start with the first table the highest bricks is 10 so 8.6 can lie in between these bricks and poor reading the highest is 23 so the the first table will help us to get the poor percent of filtered juice so let's see where 8.6 lie. It's between 8.5 and 9.0. And in between 8.5 and 9.0, the value between is 8.75. So 8.6 
lies below 8.75 so it's read at 8.5 and power reading is 23.8 so we draw a line from 23 where the line of 8.5 and 23 meet is 5.80 so we record 5.80 so let's go to the table that will give you the power percent of 0 0.8. Here it is. At 0 0.8, the value is 0 0.20. So you take 5.80 plus 0 0.20, you get 6.00. So power percent of filter use is 6.00. After calculating power percent of juices, the next step is to calculate purity purity is equals to pole over bricks times 100 this value enables us to determine if there's a decrease in in sucrose in these juices so for example if you want to get purity of first expressed juice you'll take 15.6 which is pole over 18.1 which is bricks times 100 so our purity will be 86.19 Pole and bricks of first expressed juice depends on the maturity of cane, i.e. immature cane has lower sucrose content and less total dissolved solids, hence low pole, bricks and purity. While mature fresh cane has above 17% sucrose content, 20% bricks and 85% purity. I remember in my first video on sugar technology, I had talked about formation of sucrose in sugarcane, whereby I say that sucrose is a disaccharide made up of fructose and glucose. Remember, fructose and glucose are monosaccharides, a group under carbohydrates. So if you want to get more details about sucrose, kindly watch my first video on sugar technology. I also say that sugarcane is a perishable product, so if it stays for long before milling, the the sucrose content of that sugarcane decreases. Sugarcane consists of the outer rind of thick walled cells and the inner softer parenchyma tissue. The parenchyma cells contain sugary juice and since these cells are easily ruptured, the liquid from these cells come out as the first express juice when the cane fiber is crushed at mill 1. This is the origin of the high purity of first expressed juice. The remaining juice is found in the vascular bundles and drained. This juice is the last to be extracted. It is of low purity and variable composition, hence the low purity of last expressed juice. In addition, last expressed juice normally have lowest pole and bricks compared to other juices because the largest percentage of the juice from mill 4 is water. When I was covering milling and pre-milling section of sugarcane processing, I say that the bagasse from mill 3, water is added to bagasse from mill 3 to remove the remaining sucrose and to dry bagasse. Remember this water is hot. Mixed juice has bricks and purity lower than first express juice because this juice is a mixture of juice from orolas. Remember juice from mill, mill 2, 3 and 4 has imbibition water. The table below shows some of the deviations that you can observe in analysis of juices. You have to know the cause of that deviation. You have to know also the effect of that deviation to the processing line. And finally, you have to know the corrective measures of any deviation. So these are just some of the examples of those observations. If you know any of any of other observations kindly let let us meet at comment section the first observation is when you get mixed juice of bricks below 12 yet can being milled is mature that means if first express juice has bricks of above 18 but the bricks of mixed juice is below 12 the cause of that is excess imbibition water being added to screen bagasse. I told you imbibition water is normally added at meal 2 and meal 3 to remove the sucrose remaining in the bagasse. So if this water is excess, 
it's above 30 percent of canned milk you'll find that you find that the bricks of milk juice will be below 12. so the effect of this is it will need more concentration time at evaporation section remember at evaporation section water is being removed from juices so if there's more water in juice there will be time needed to remove that water will be more so corrective measure for this of the for this deviation is to inform the male in charge to reduce amount of being of water being added to bagasse as I told you, the recommended percentage of water to be added to bagasse is 30% of cane milk. The second observation is purity difference of more than two in juices. For example, our first expressed juice has 86 point something and you find that mixed juice has 84 or 83. That means there's a, a problem. The cause of that is hydrolysis or microbial breakdown. Remember, hydrolysis is the breakdown of sucrose to glucose and fructose. And microbial breakdown, this refers to breakdown to... The second observation is purity difference of more than two in juices. For example, you can, after analysis, you can find out that out that Purity of first expressed is above 86 and purity of clear juice and mixed juice is below 83. This shows that there is hydrolysis which is breakdown of sucrose to fructose and glucose or microbial breakdown. Remember, leuconostic species and lactobacillus species consume sucrose producing lactic acid and dextran. So the cause of this is it reduced sucrose content of juice, hence sugar loss. Remember, sucrose is the same as sugar, which is the same as pulp. The corrective measure for this problem, number one, increase dosing of biocide. I informed you earlier that biocide is a chemical whose chemical name is sodium tidiocarbamate. The function of this biocide is to kill microorganisms which can consume sucrose. The second co corrective measure is to sanitize meals, heaters at juice treatment section, liming term, and clarifier to remove layers of microorganisms which have which have built up built up in these devices. And the third corrective measure is to increase pH of clear juice to around 7.3 and maintain it there. Remember, hydrolysis normally occur at a faster rate at acidic environment. As when I say acidic environment, it's pH below 7.0. The third observation is purity of a first expressed juice below 81% that shows young cane is being milled the effect of milling young cane the effects of milling young cane to the processing is number one poor clarification remember young cane has carbohydrates like starch and starch affect clarification of juices at juice treatment section number two you have slow crystallization young cane have more young can have things like starch and this starch make the juice to be gummy and prevent formation of crystals and finally young can will provide more molasses than sugar crystals so the corrective measure for this is to advise agriculture office to harvest mature can number four it's when you get high bricks and low pole of first expressed juice sometimes you get you can get first expressed juice has bricks of around 19 and pole is around 41.2 this automatically will give you low pole percent so if you find that the the juice the pole the bricks of first expressed juice 
is high and pole is low, that shows that stale cane is being milled. And the effect of this stale cane is number one, lead to slow crystallization, and number two, less sugar crystals. So that means the, the highest percentage of that juice will be molasses. The corrective measure for this is to advise the factory to mill sugarcane within 24 hours after harvesting. I informed you that sugarcane is a perishable product. Product immediately it's harvested in the field, it starts to it start to deteriorate. In conclusion, this analysis is considered as primary analysis in sugar factory because it aids in determining sucrose recovery. Data obtained from this analysis enables the quality control manager to estimate amount of sugar that can be produced at the end of processing line as well as sugar lost through burgers, hydrolysis, fermentation and leakages. I wish to remind you my fellow food scientists that for you to be the best sampler or analyst in any sugar factory you must understand the whole sugar processing line for example you can be requested by management to analyze c circuit so you must know the section where c circuit is sampled that's why i informed you in the previous video that laboratory is the control tower of sugar factory if you are new to my youtube channel i welcome you and i request you to watch my previous videos on sugar technology so that we can move together if you have any question on any of my videos kindly let it, let us meet at comment section thank you very much for watching my video if you have not yet subscribed kindly subscribe so that you, you can get more educative video on food science and technology